It's a great blessing once more again to share with you what the Lord is saying to the church at this hour. And this is very important because um, we, for a long time, have longed to hear from the Lord, especially with regard to the events of this hour. And uh, I want to share with you yet another conversation. The precious people of Finland, well, uh, in that conversation, the Lord he lifted me up above the earth in a vision. And when he lifted me up above the earth in a vision, then he showed me the earth from where he lifted me up. And when I looked at the earth, I thought the, the earth had been hit by an earthquake because I saw the opening of the surface and the dust and the soil that was jumping off the surface of the earth. A lot of disturbance disturbing the surface of the earth. So I thought an earthquake had indeed hit the earth. Only later is when I saw the tremendous glory that had come from heaven and hit the earth. And then I saw people in their glorious bodies coming out of the soil. And when they first came out of the soil, at the moment when they came out of the soil, in their glorious bodies, the glory and the dust by the surface of the earth were mixed together. But the more they were taken up into the sky, then they, the more they moved into the pure glory of the Lord. And then a cloud came and covered them in. And then the voice of the Lord spoke in that vision. And the voice said, and the majority of them have remained in the dust of the earth. And then I woke up. That is the conversation I want to share with you today. What is the message that the Lord is speaking to the nation of Finland through that very mighty historic vision? When he lifted me up above the earth, showed me the earth, thought it was an earthquake, only to turn out to be people in their glorious bodies being pulled out of the dust, the soil, into heaven. Well, again, the Bible becomes the common basic denominator, the point of reference to which we can turn in order to get the understanding of what the Lord is saying here. And I found out that the Lord had shared this conversation with Daniel, the prophet of the Lord. We all know that Daniel is an end time prophet. He saw then the things that are now. And then I also found out that he had shared the same conversation with Isaiah, the prophet of the Lord. The rapture of the dead. I have already seen how the dead church, those who are asleep in the dust, will be raptured when that day arrives. That is the prophecy I'm laying before you here. However, what is the message from that conversation? What is the Lord saying to the nation of Finland and to the church, to the global community? Listen, precious people. In the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, this is what he says. When Daniel saw this vision, this is what the Lord showed him. He says, Verse 1, Daniel 12. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. And he says, but at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. 
And verse 2, he says, multitudes, multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life and others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many into righteousness like the stars forever and ever. That is where I want to begin with you precious people. You see right in there that when Daniel saw the same vision the Lord showed me, how the dead will be raptured on the day of the rapture of the church. There is a message that beholds. The first thing we see is the prophetic timeline of the Lord. We see in verse 1 the great distress. And verse 2 we see the rapture. The multitude that sleep in the dust of the earth finally out, coming out. And today I want to share with you on some of the prophecies I have gone all over the globe and given. November 22nd, 2009, all through to November 29th, I was in the island of Hispaniola, and that island has Dominican Republic and Haiti. The Dominican Republic received me. I was in Puerto Plata, Santiago, the Dominican Republic. I was in the city of Higüe. Preaching repentance and prophesying, giving the prophecy of a historic earthquake that was coming to shake this island. That they may turn away from sin and be delivered from it, be saved from it. I spoke to those people. But on the other side, Haiti, I was not received. And then Come January 12th, January 12th, 2010, the words of my tongue as I sat in the living room back in Kenya, I was shocked when I saw the accurate words of my tongue fulfilled. And I said it would be historic. And I said, you will try to run, but you will not be able to run away. I was very stunned. And then Chile, 2009, January, I was in Chile. All the way, giving the prophecy. And I told them in Chile that I see the ocean vomit. I see an earthquake and the ocean vomit on the land. And I went all the way to Concepcion, which was later to turn out to be the epicenter of the earthquake I was talking about. I was in TVN, Televisión Nacional de Chile, a global TV. And I was in the program called Puertas Abiertas, Open Doors, warning about this prophecy. Until February 20, 3.34 p.m., February 22nd, 27th, February 27th, 2010, my words were fulfilled. And many other prophecies. The global economic crisis, the first Asian tsunami, the Sinch one, many of these things. Daniel says there will be a distress as has never happened again. Since the beginning of nations until then, but when you go to Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, Daniel now sees the rapture. He says, after the distress, when the distress begins like this, then the Messiah comes. That should tell you as at where we are standing as the church, how close we are to the coming of the Messiah. However, there is a more important message that is in this, embedded in this vision here. And Daniel says, those who are wise, he sees them shining like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead men into righteousness, shining like the stars forever and ever. Listen to me, precious people. In other words, the Lord 
shows me the same vision, sends me to Finland, and the message is this, that this is the hour to be wise in the church. You must embrace wisdom now. If you look at the church today, she is not wise. If you look at Matthew 25, when Jesus describes the bride that will enter, he says, the wise virgins, she's supposed to be wise. But when you look at the deeper understanding of wise in the Bible, he says in Job 28, verse 28, Behold, it is the fear of the Lord that is wisdom. And that means that even as the church has been living her Christian lifestyle, there's one very important ingredient that she has missed out. That the fear of the Lord, without which she cannot enter. But now look at this. He says that wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is what defines the bride at this hour. But now look at this. What does the fear of the Lord bring to the church? It transforms the life of the church. It makes her obey the ordinances of the Lord. It makes her obey the command of the Lord. Walk in righteousness. Walk in holiness. But today if you look at the pastors, they behave as though they don't fear the Lord at all. They don't care. That's why they can come and lie. The Lord told me there are some people here, two people, I need some money, 10,000 euros each. If you lie like that, is that the fear of the Lord? And so Daniel is saying that in the days before the rapture, it will be very key for the church to make sure she walks in the fear of the Lord, which is wisdom. And Daniel sees a second group that goes to heaven. He sees two groups raptured. One group resurrected, sorry, excuse me. He sees two groups resurrected. One group is resurrected for rapture, another one for judgment. But the group resurrected for rapture, there are two subgroups. He sees the wise. They enter. Bright like heaven. Their garments, their bodies are brilliant like the heavens. But then, Daniel also sees another subgroup. He sees another subgroup also entering among those raptured. These ones, this time, are those who lead people into righteousness. And that means the Lord has sent me to pronounce to this nation, to declare here to the people of Finland, that behold, this is the hour in which to be wise, number one. Number two, to lead people to righteousness. And in the same breath, it's the, it's the Lord, it's as if the Lord is sending me to ask the nation of Finland, in your salvation, have you been wise? In your salvation, have you really led people into the righteousness of the Lord? And the answer is no. Many times you find that the way the Christians have lived has caused the non-Christians to not want to enter, not want to be born again. The Muslims, when they look at the way the Christian women walk, very short, almost naked, immoral dressing, they say, no, I don't want my daughters to dress like that. The church has not actually led, has actually not led people to righteousness of the Lord. She has led them away from Jesus. Now, Isaiah saw the same dream in Isaiah 26. And in Isaiah 26, when he saw the same dream, this is what Isaiah says. He described the morning dew. Isaiah 26, and he says, he says, but your dead will live, their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the earth, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to our slain. And he says, go my people, enter your rooms, Shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while. 
until his wrath has passed by. See, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the peoples of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the blood shed upon her. She will conceal her slain no longer. What is the message that Isaiah gives the church, brings to the church, when he sees the same vision of the rapture of the dead? Number one, Isaiah sees the morning dew, which is the anointing, the flow of this hour, the mighty visitation of this moment. Isaiah calls it the morning dew. And you know, Isaiah says, shout for joy, meaning the morning dew was so fresh that they had to shout and celebrate it. Shout for joy. And that can only tell you there was a long period of thirst. The church was thirsty. They were longing for it. And Isaiah then says, it makes the church joyous, which means it exalts the church. When the Holy Spirit comes at this hour, elevates the church, upgrades the church, validates the church, establishes the credentials of the church. That when the world sees, say, wow, that is the church whose God is Jehovah. Their cripples are walking. Their HIV is healed, like you see in Kenya now. Now they are happy they can walk in any office and say, I'm born again. I'm from the ministry of repentance. We love the Lord. Because their testimony has been established. The doctors have come with records of DNA, PCR. People have turned negative. He says, the morning dew validates the church, upgrades the church, exalts the church, brings joy. However, Isaiah sees a very important thing also. He says that the earth will now never fail to disclose. She cannot conceal any blood shed on her. Or anyone, if he died here, you see, oh, somebody was killed here. You, you cannot hide. What is the meaning of that? That is what Joel was talking about when Joel said, I shall pour my spirit on all men. They shall prophesy sons and daughters, see visions, dreams. He was implying that during this time, nobody will be able to lie to the church. You cannot hide any blood that was shed. If blood was shed here, it will just be evident. It will show up. If somebody was slain, killed there, it will be known somebody was killed here. That means when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes to the church, he reveals to the church the wisdom of God. He enables the church that nobody can lie to the church anymore. If you are inviting somebody in your church to preach and they are in sexual sin, you will see a dream. Maybe you will see him coming with gumboots and mud, walking with mud into your church. And that's what he's saying, that now the sin cannot be concealed. During this dispensation, by exposing sin, oh, blood was shed here. Oh, somebody was killed here. What is the purpose? What is Isaiah trying to say to the church in Finland through this vision? He's essentially saying that when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes, he exposes sin. And when sin is exposed in the land, in the church, then the purpose is one, to ignite a revival, a repentance revival, to cause people to repent, to cause the church to embrace repentance. And in so doing, she will prepare a glorious garment for the Lord. That is how the church prepares the way of the Lord. In Kenya, for example, now, it is national repentance. The whole nation, even the leaders, come. All churches assemble and repent as one. That is what was prophesied in the Bible, that a time would come when now the nations would need to prepare the way of the Lord, prepare his way. So in other words, by showing me the vision of the rapture of the dead. 
the Lord has profoundly spoken with the church in Finland, in Israel, and globally. He's saying, number one, that this is the hour for the church to be wise. The dispensation of the wisdom of God is now. Number two, he's saying this is the hour when in the way you live your Christian lifestyle, you must now lead people unto the Lord, the righteousness of the Lord. Number three, he's talking about the morning dew. He's saying this is the hour for the Holy Spirit in the church because only the Holy Spirit has been delegated has been consigned, given the assignment to prepare a glorious bride for the Messiah. So the church must embrace the Holy Spirit. But he's also saying that in these last days, time out with the false prophets, time out with the false apostles, time out with falsehood, lies, because it will be exposed. So in this conversation, we see that the Lord is announcing the coming of the Messiah. He's saying, hey, look, the Messiah is coming. Prepare the way. And he's saying that this becomes the blessed generation, the generation of revival, the generation of repentance, the generation of the Holy Spirit, the generation which is the vessel Look at the church today. Do you see that generation? There is a problem. If the Messiah is holy, if the Messiah is indeed the righteous man, the spirit-filled man, how then will the church in her current form with decay the gospel of, of decay. Apostasy. Sexual sin. Immoral dressing among women. Immoral behavior among the youth in the church. Pregnancies in the youth church. Abortions in the church. Extramarital pregnancies in the church. Christians are smoking and drinking alcohol. Christians are going to the secular movies. They are watching a man in Hollywood who is cheating on his wife with his secretary. That is the role model of the church today. Witchcraft. So tell me, the gospel of prosperity which is the gospel that says you can bribe God and get away with righteousness. How can you preach such a gospel of corruption? With all these things I've described, how can the church enter the holy, imperishable kingdom of God? And that's why the Lord is now announcing to the church that prepare Prepare your garment. The time has come when the anointing of God is now exposing sin as sin. Calling sin, sin. How will they repent if they don't know what is sin? And that's why you see the Lord leading me to enumerate the tight trousers in the church, short miniscus in the church, the young men are putting on earrings, they are piercing their noses. Sometimes, if you go to San Francisco, other cities, Chicago, those, there are other people that are with a certain sexuality that wear that. How can the church be in the same countenance, the same appearance, same character, same features as the dark world. The church must repent. The church must turn away from sin. 
If you feel this message has touched you and you think this is the moment to cross over, then repeat this prayer. Say, precious Jesus, I recognize your work at Calvary. And indeed, I honor you and thank you for redeeming me at the cross. And today, I surrender my life to you and receive you wholeheartedly as my Lord and my Savior. Please redeem me, deliver me, and establish my name in the book of life of the Lamb of God. And bless me with the Holy Spirit. Precious Jesus, at this moment, I cross over from death and sin to eternal life. In the mighty name of Jesus, today I am born again. Precious people, attend, look for, go to a Bible teaching church, not a church where the pastor is a comedian, is making people laugh. What is there to laugh about Jesus on the cross? May the Lord bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom haverim. <laughs>